What's up, YouTube fam? It's been a hot second, hasn't it? I bought an R8 that needed some work. So, I've got a lot to tell you. So, why don't I just start working on it and I'll talk over the camera? Sounds good. So, first up was the wrap. And not gonna lie, taking this thing off freaking sucked. It was years beyond ex expiration it was worn it was it was so thin that it kept just breaking off into the tiniest little chunks it's clearly focused camera view you can see these tiny little pinholes which just kept causing it to break every freaking millimeter so i was just taking my freaking heat gun it also really didn't help that it was like 30 degrees outside and i was just blasting away at this thing taking piece by piece like even when I got chunks like this off, once they were cooled down or if they weren't heated up enough, they would literally just flake off and break and crumble just like this. So that's why I was taking all the body panels off because where the wrap was kind of tucked into places, it was almost impossible to get. Like, look at this wrap, it, it looks like a potato chip. No wrap should ever look like that. It was well beyond its age and just not taken care of. So I was just chucking away at this wrap. Knowing that I was gonna take the wrap off, I let some kids draw my car. And I guess it gave them to two rules. Don't write anything vulgar and don't write anything, don't write any cuss words. So what did four out of the five of them do? They basically just wrote vulgarity all over the car. Uh, the fifth one just wrote something about how their genitalia was itchy. It was pretty cool, not gonna lie. That last chunk that I just got was the biggest piece that I was able to get for the hood and rear section trunk section it's not really trunk because the front is a trunk we call it a frunk but yeah it was the biggest piece i got i was really happy about it and then i cried the rest of the way because i realized that i still had the entire top of the roof to do i guess casper decided to stop by and yeet my camera to the freaking floor thanks a lot bud What a nice way to break in the new Sony A7C and Tamron 2875mm. Is that how you're supposed to say all that? I don't know. I, I bought this stuff so I could record some pretty cool videos. But back to the car, I was also doing some uh, maintenance as the brakes were far past gone. So removing the uh, rotors, removing the brake pads, and surprisingly enough, the maintenance on this car is semi-affordable. I was able to uh, resurface the rear rotors. Ooh eye contact how you doing and resurfacing was only 15 bucks people say to not re resurface but they were within spec and it's literally written on the rotor itself so uh resurfacing the rotors the rear rotors only cost 15 bucks all four rotors were actually seized onto the hub and those this was me successfully getting off I, I had to cut a lot of time of me just trying to get it off but i found that the best way to just give it a little bit of wd-40 uh, apply some heat and then it is just popped right off. So resurfacing the rear rotors was only 15 bucks. So that was nice. I had wanted to resurface the fronts, but they were far past the, the worn spec and I, I was fine replacing them. The front rotors for replacement, I think were 350 bucks each. So granted, yeah, it's expensive in comparison to a Honda, but hey, in comparison to other German cars, it's almost like the exact same thing. That was one of the, actually the main pulls to me buying the R8 was that it was user maintainable friendly that you could do all the maintenance yourself and not have to take it into the Audi dealership. Even though Audi wants you to take it in there, it's a, a simple brake job like this I can do myself. So it's cheap to maintain, it's easy to maintain, and the R8 has had a pretty good standing with being a re really reliable car, both the V8 and the V10. And this is actually the, the V10 model as well. Taking off the sideway was freaking kicking my butt because this one bolt would not come out. I got it all the way loose, but it just would not come out. So finally, once I got that bad boy out, I could take the side blades off. And so again, the reason with taking all like the side blades and the body panels off was because uh, in order to get the wrap off, like where they had kind of tucked in the wrap where the uh, edges are, the, the wrap was so old and bad that it had cracked and broken where those edges were. So the only way I was going to get the wrap off from in those little crevices was if I took every single body panel off. And it's kind of going to help me for some of the plans that I have for the car anyway to kind of take everything off. So I just kind of took it upon myself to do it. 
And yeah, take the time to clean all these itty bitty crevices that are never gonna see the light of day once the panels are back on. But this is Rusty. I don't know if you guys have seen my dog before, but he's the best as goodest boy in the entire planet, just letting you guys know. So he helps me work on the car and it's great. So I guess I never really got to how I got this Audi R8. So I used to live in San Diego, California. The first 26 years I lived there, it was freaking awesome. I loved everything about it. After that, things started getting more expensive and they didn't stop getting more expensive and I was just miserable there. And then this little C word 19 came along and San Diego was awful. Just everybody's worst side came out for the last two, three years and I just could not stand it anymore. So I left. I bought a toy hauler trailer, sold off, gave away basically everything I owned, threw it into the trailer, and my wife and I moved to the middle of nowhere, Washington. We live in Moses Lake, Washington. Good old Moses Lake. It's freaking hilarious when I tell people that I moved from San Diego to Moses Lake. Everyone is so confused. But about a year or two ago, I went to my first festival at the Gorge Amphitheater. It was Base Canyon. I just fell in love instantly. So I looked for the biggest little city next to the gorge and Moses Lake had a Home Depot and a Walmart so it checked all the boxes that I needed. So I applied for a remote position up here and got it instantly. And after about a year of that I quit because being a remote technician is freaking awful. I was just basically just driving. Yeah, I, I know buddy, I know. I was basically just driving for like six to eight hours every single day doing about 20 minutes of work and I, I'm just not built to be a long haul driver man it's not what I want to do it's not what I like to do I like being a technician and I like fixing things so I got a new job but before we get to my new job enjoy my heat gun breaking right before your eyes Actually, before I tell you about my new job, I, I, I got the R8 before that, so let's get back to the R8. So I actually bought my house in San Diego in 2012, 2013, and in order to afford it, I lived in a studio upstairs and I rented out the four bedrooms down below. Oh, what do we have here? A Reese's Pieces wrapper? Lucky me. So I quote unquote house hacked for about 10 years and then C word 19 came around and made the housing market go absolutely crazy. So I used that as my excuse to get the heck out of Dodge. So when we first moved to Washington, I still had tenants living in my house. So we lived in a trailer for about five, six months before I finally went back and sold my house. It was pretty crazy considering I told two people I was selling my house and in a week I had four offers for it. So I sold my house, had a decent chunk of change left over, bought a house up here in Washington. I just, I, I got a mortgage, I just put 20% down. So I had a chunk of change laying around. So I wanted to buy a nice car that was pretty old, essentially, quote unquote, cause this, this is a 2012, so it was 10 years old when I bought it. But I wanted to buy a vehicle that I thought would maintain its value if I maintained the vehicle. That way I could own a cool car for however many years and then when I was done with it basically just kind of sell it for what I either bought it for or I put into it that that was kind of my hopes with buying the R8 when buying the R8 I was actually pretty patient I think I probably looked for about six months before I actually bought this one I was looking for a 2009 V8 those were like the cheapest R8 you could buy but I was patient enough and this one popped up. It was a private sale person. It had a really crappy wrap on it. It was lacking in all sorts of maintenance. I mean, look at this dog. This is the greatest dog in the freaking planet. Are you kidding me? Look how good he is. This is a good looking dog. So this one just needed little things here and there that I would probably change myself anyway. And it was just barely over what a 2009 V8 would cost. So I bought it. And also, now that I don't live in San Diego, we have what's called a real winter in Washington, and it snows sometimes, and or it's just frozen outside. So, not that I'm going to be driving this all the time in the winter, but the fact that it's all-wheel drive, it's kind of nice that I, you know, won't just drift off into a jit somewhere and just die. And I just kind of briefly mentioned this, and I know I'm just jumping all over the place, but hey, I need to fill some time while you just watch me just unwrap a car, essentially. But yeah, I got married. I married the most incredible woman I've ever met in my entire life. She was one of the big draws to move to Washington because she kind of spent most of her adult life here, but she spent it on the west side. And the west side is basically just San Diego, but in like a forest. 
and I did not want to move from San Diego in the desert to San Diego in the forest. So got a dope wife now, got a dope car, and I got a dope job. Let me tell you about that now. So I am an instrumentation technician slash electrician for a company called SGL Carbon. And what do we make at SGL Carbon? You guessed it, carbon freaking fiber. So yeah, I basically maintain and maintenance equipment that makes carbon fiber. Pretty freaking dope, right? Well, the job's incredibly boring, but I kind of like it. It's basically just kind of doing a lot of preventative maintenance on the machinery, just making sure that it keeps pumping out carbon because we don't make like the weave or anything. We literally just turn fiber that isn't carbon into carbon fiber. So it is a cool job, it kind of is repetitive, but it's nice to kind of just have a, a good routine of a job. Also, not working uh, five eights anymore is freaking awesome. I've worked five eights since I was like 18, and just having two days off is really not enough to do anything with your life. So now I work like a two week schedule and I work night shift. So this was all recorded probably about two to six in the morning because you know what? I'm the only one up in town and there's nothing else to do because Moses Lake is freaking small. Not gonna lie. Like that is the good and bad thing about Moses Lake. Like there is no traffic whatsoever and I live five minutes from my house. Break that carbon fiber blade in half. Yeah. Like one time I was looking for a button up shirt and my options were Walmart and Ross and basically they had none. So you know, it's just one of life's trade offs, you know, financial stability or living in a town that has a target. You gotta choose one. But it's kind of nice, like moving here, it's kind of nice, a, a, a nice fresh start. It's it's the, the whole mentality of moving out of your hometown. Like I get to be exactly who I want to be here. I don't have the past to carry on from all the weird stuff that happened in high school. People don't know my background. Like I get a fresh start. I get to be who I want to be. Typically when you do that, you're supposed to, you know, kind of like just blend in with the crowd. But you know, being a Cali kid, you know, showing up in the middle of nowhere and then you just buy an R8. I, I don't know what I was thinking, man. It just kind of. Anyway, the next topic we're rambling into is the music in the background. I know it hasn't been very loud, but if you hear any of it and you like it, the music was basically just made by either me, my nephew, or me and my nephew. So we used to make music together in San Diego that is probably, I, I do miss a little bit of it. The, what we miss in San Diego are friends, family, and food. Like the food here, it, it has like one of everything. It doesn't necessarily mean one of everything is good it just has it so there's the slim pickings and uh, so, something personal if you guys don't know about me i i don't cook i'm good at a lot of things like weirdly good at a lot of things cooking definitely not one of them i just i've never taken the time to really understand how to enjoy it i've kind of just always cooked and kind of ate it and i was like all right well i did that and that's it and that is why my wife, Rachel, has a ring on her finger because she went to culinary school and basically is just a personal sh chef for me. The thing is, like, I don't ask her to do it. She just does it. She enjoys it. She likes to make me food. So just life update. Reese is a happy guy, man. I'm, I'm living my best life out here in Washington. I'm freaking loving it. Next, next plan for life is kids. Rachel and I were trying for kids. I'll, uh, I'll be open about something like we, uh, we found out we were indeed uh, pregnant at one point in time. And the very next day, we found out Rachel was having a miscarriage. Yeah, kind of a lot to drop on a YouTube video. But hey, you know, it's better than having to explain that over and over again to 20 different people. But time has gone by. I think we're mentally, emotionally, and physically healed enough. And we're, we're back at it trying again. So hopefully that's coming up. So here it is, all torn down, front bumpers off, front covers off. Here you can see some of the damage from the wrap being taken off. The uh, the hood, I believe, was replaced at some point in time, and it just doesn't look like it was sprayed very well. They took the primer off, it took the paint off, it took the clear coat off. So car is going to need basically a respray. On the door, you can see some of the clear coat was taken off. I mean, I, I used a heat gun, I used hot water, side blades off rear fenders off. The original wrap was done pretty well. It looks like they actually took a lot of the body panels off to do it, but it was just so old and so worn down that it was so st stupidly hard to get off. There's that beautiful V10 engine. 
But another main reason I wanted to take the body panels off was to... Yep, that's an air strut. That's four air struts. And that is airlift 3P management. So, as you can tell, the plan is to bag it. So that's probably what the next video is going to be about, is me installing the uh, stretch. Not too hard, but mostly routing all the lines is what I wanted to record, because I couldn't really find too much info online about it, so might as well do it myself. So, I'll see you in the next one. Peace!